Well, hello and welcome to Dolphin Stadium here in Brisbane's north side for the Hastings Deering Colts Grand Final between the winner Manly Seagulls and the Sunshine Coast Falcons. You can just see in the background there the Australian schoolboys who will defeat the junior Kiwis a try basically on full time has uh, all but secured victory for the Aussies. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to our live and exclusive coverage here on the QConnect Network. My name's Cameron Salad. Great to be alongside Ian Apps for this big one. Appsy, how good. The final day in September, Sunday afternoon in the outer suburbs of Brisbane, just enjoying some fun footy. Yeah, that's it. And as you can probably hear in the background, mm. there's, uh, there's already a very strong uh, crowd building up. Um, you know, there's people lining at the back of the stands as well. There's, um, there's limited space left. People are starting to queue. It's, uh, oh, mate, it's looking good, and we're excited for a big game of footy. Oh, 100%. 36 points to 20, the score with the Australian schoolboys getting the victory over the junior Kiwis. Earlier, it was Queensland Country, a dominant 44 points to four victory over Queensland City. We're into game four of five now. And who would have thought at the start of the Hastings during Colt season that the game we started with was the Sunshine Coast Falcons and Winner Manly Seagulls playing up at Sunshine Coast Stadium the first week of uh, first weekend of March. Yeah. And in the last weekend of September, here we are to finish the season off between the Winner Manly Seagulls and Sunshine Coast Falcons. Yeah, and it should be a good game too. Both of these teams, uh, you know, they've... they've Maybe thrown up a couple of surprises throughout the final series, um, you know, with a, a couple of surprising exits out of the final yeah. series as well. So, um, you know, really excited for what should be a good game. Both teams got some very exciting talent uh, within their squads. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. Well, you mentioned that the Sunshine Coast Falcons are probably the surprise packet of the Hastings, Deer and Colts final series. As we have a look at the results from week one, where the minor premiers, the Townsville Blackhawks, they bow, uh, they, 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 they sent to the second week of the finals. We see those results on screen as we speak. Uh, start of the weekend off with the Devils getting a 40 points to 20 win over the Tigers. The winner Manly Seagulls progressed through to the preliminary finals with that close, narrow victory uh, over the Burley Bears. Uh, the Falcons, well, we could say did a number on the Blackhawks, 24-4. Uh, it was played at Sunshine Coast Stadium and finally in week one, it was the Cutters who we could say, I think, upset the Seagulls, the winner man, uh, the Tweed Seagulls, uh, 23 points to 10. Uh, Absolutely, that was week one. And as we start to roll in, of course, from there, there, there's no second chances when you get into week two, is there? No, that's right. You're playing, uh, playing for your season, playing for the year. And uh, look, both of these teams uh, didn't have an easy run in. No, uh, certainly not. I mean, who would have thought, though, that the minor premiers, the... Uh, the Townsville Blackhawks would go out in straight sets pretty convincing, convincingly too with the Cutters at 30 points to 6 victory and of course the Bears uh, getting the job done pretty easily up against the uh, the North Devils there and then as we roll into to week 3, uh, last week, um, you know, the matchups up in Townsville and in Burley uh, we saw the winner Manly Seagulls, they did a number on the Cutters there, I think they probably played their final the week before up against their country cousins in Townsville, uh, that was played up at uh, Jack Mancy Oval, and, um, and who would have thought that the Falcons got over the Burley Bears? A lot of people predicting that the Burley side would bounce back after that uh, first round loss against the, the, the Seagulls to, I guess, face each other in the, in the big dance, but it wasn't to be. The Sunshine Coast Falcons 23-16. Yeah, that's right. I think uh, a lot of people were probably expecting a, a, a game double with the, the Seagulls uh, sorry, the Seagulls and uh, the Burley Bears playing in both the Intra Super Cup Grand Final and the Hastings Deering Colt, uh, Colts Grand Final as well. So, uh, yeah, look, a couple of surprises in there, but doesn't that make for exciting finals football? Oh, 100%, 100%. Big big year for Wyndham. They made the Oswide Bank Melbourne a Cup Final. They didn't get yeah. the job done, but in saying that, they built from there. Uh, they won the uh, Brisbane Rugby League A-grade competition. And then today, featuring in both the Hastings Deering Colts right, and yep. Intra Super Cup Grand Finals, a huge occasion for the club. Let's have a look at the winner, Manly Seagulls. They finished third at the end of the regular season. 16 wins a draw and three losses in their competition games. No changes to the 17 that played last week up against the Blackhawks. Uh, the Cutters, I should say. Shannon Gardner is the fullback on the left edge. Ryan O'Keefe and Reese Hoffman will be on the left, the right. Elliot Vincent and Jalen Tanganini Turner. The halves are Will Parslow and David Quinlan. Up front is Brock Richardson. Jake Simpkin and Clayton Mack, the back row. Lachlan Perry, Dr Drayden, Sorensen McGee and Harrison Graham. And on the bench, Jackson Lott, uh, Nafosa, Malatoa, James Robinson and David Butler round out the 17. They're coached by Joe O'Callaghan. And uh, a short time ago, we were able to catch up with Joe pregame. 
Joe, it was a strong win to start your finals campaign against the Burley Bears and then progressed uh, last week with uh, a win against the Cutters. Pretty convincing too, particularly in that first half. Um, it's been a good final series and a good season for Wynnum. Yeah, look, mate, it has been. Uh, there's a good vibe around the club. Uh, obviously, uh, Mel Meninga Cup GF earlier in the year, the Colts and Q Cup, to, oh, yes, Intro Super Cup today, uh, and the BRL uh, won the other day as well. So all four senior teams have played in the grand final, which is excellent. Uh, mate, it has been a good final series, but it's been a tight final series as well. And, you know, I think Sunshine Coast, uh, you know, they, they put a great win over um, Townsville in week one. Um, and, mate, they showed a lot of resilience down at Pizzy Park last week as well. So I'm, I'm expecting a cracker of a grand final. Well, you mentioned about how successful Winner Manly have been this year amongst uh, many of the major competitions. That must reflect back in the club and at training too with the morale being high. Yeah, look, mate, it's been a, a pretty big transition. Uh, I came in at the same time when Brido started as Intra Super Cup coach three years ago, and there's been a lot changed both on field and off field during that time. And there were some pretty hard decisions that were made in that time as well. And uh, look, mate, every club has its lows. Um, but, you know, when you actually see all that work come off, um, what, what we've done in the last 12 months, uh, you know, look, it, it makes it all worth it at the end of the day, mate. How good's this? You know, look, uh, great experience today for everyone involved, and uh, look, it's come up a treat. And you got four players backing up from the Oswald Bank Melbourne Cup final. Sadly, though, for Wyndham, just fell short. No doubt those boys are going to use that as motivation for today. Yeah, definitely. We're really lucky that there's been some boys that have played in big games this year. So, uh, yeah, off the back of uh, the Melbourne Cup GF and also. Uh, Hoffy, uh, Harrison and, and Jake also played for the Queensland 18s this year on Origin Night. So um, I'm hoping that those boys that have played in some of the big occasions this year can, can bring that experience here today. And um, especially Hoffy and uh, Jake, you know, they're leaving to the West Tigers at the end of this game. They've only got 70 more minutes in a Wyndham jersey. Um, I'm sure they're going to give it everything they've got. Beautiful, Joe. Well, all the best in today's clash. Yeah, cheers. Much appreciated. Now as we look to their challenges this afternoon, the Sunshine Coast Falcons, Apsi, they finish fourth in the regular season. 16 wins, four losses for them. Uh, sorry, I should say 14 wins and six losses for them over the 20 games that they played. Uh, and for them, just the one change in their lineup this afternoon to, yes, uh, to last week's side that, of course, defeated the Burley Bears. Let's have a look at their team. Luke Murtar is the fullback. The left-hand side, Blake Wilson and Tom Dwan, Kane Jackson and Gian Lajada are on the right. Jaden Zanchetta and Jack Wright are the halves. Rowan Jardine and Wyatt Reynolds up front. Tyson Smoothie, uh, the experience number nine, comes into uh, the has the hooking duties this afternoon. Trent Luiro, uh, Stephen Borg and Matthias Chanky round out the back row. And Zach Green is in. Uh, Aaron Nelson uh, in for Ty James. Nick Ellums and Justin Makira Ray. Yeah, the... Four men on the bench for the Sunshine Coast Falcons. They're coached by Sam Marwini. And again, we were able to catch up with Sam pre-game to hear his thoughts. Good now? Righto. Okay, sweet. Sam, some would say that the Sunshine Coast have been the surprise pack at this final series, knocking off the minor premiers in the first week and then uh, Burley last week, but no doubt the club's not thinking that. No, mate. Um, internally, we've got a lot of belief and we've probably been building um, for the whole back half of this season, to be honest. So those results um, didn't surprise us. Uh, Look, last week it was a, a tight tussle between Burley, but at the end of the day, you got the job done. I thought uh, it was a, a great performance right across the paddock. As the coach, is that how you saw it? Yeah, mate, I've got to agree with you there. We, we've got um, 17 blokes that know their role um, and are doing it really well, and, and that sort of breeds confidence in each other and, and that, I suppose, understanding that it might take 70 minutes to grind it out, but we're prepared to do that. And, and where do you think you're going to be able to beat Wyndham today? Because they're pretty strong in the middle of the park. Yeah, mate, um, that is their strength, um, and that's where we're going to take them to. We, you know, we've got to take them through the middle. Um, you can't finesse these games. You need to be strong through the middle and with tough carries and, and, and bruising defence, and that's what we're going to do. And finally, I think big things expected of Tyson Smoothie in uh, the number nine jersey today. Obviously, he's going to utilise that one Intrust Super Cup game with the experience that he had this year. Yeah, mate, um, everyone knows what a fantastic player Tyson is, but... Probably the, the bigger measure of him is that um, within the group he doesn't actually overplay it. Um, he understands that he's just got a role to play as well. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to a big performance from him. Well, all the best, Sam, in today's clash. Cheers, thank you. Thanks, mate. All the Sweet. best. Thanks. Well, we've heard from the two teams now with the lineups. Apps. It's now time to go sideline. Kev Brasher is joining us this afternoon from looks to be a picturesque Dolphin Stadium and uh, down on the eastern side of the field. Good afternoon to you, Kev. Good afternoon, boys. It's absolutely beautiful down here on the sideline. And one of the most fearsome things about taking on the Wynnum Manly Seagulls is the chook pen. And they brought it with them. Look at this, a portable chook pen. The Wynnum Manly Seagulls. How much will that help them get over the line here in the Hastings during Colts Grand Final? Of course, they'll be in the Intra Super Cup as well. You'll see this place fill right up for game time. 
Well, it's an officially a sellout here at Dolphins Stadium. No more tickets. So the next best thing, of course, is to watch the Hastings Deer and Colts match so live on the QCNet network and then switch over to Channel 9 at 3 o'clock this afternoon for the big one between the winner Manly Seagulls and the Burley Bears. All of this year, uh, we have seen weapons uh, announced each and every week, just showcasing the best players of the round in each Hastings Deer and Colts match. Absy, we've come up uh, with a weapon each that we think are going to be the difference in today's society. Who have you gone with? Mate, I've gone with the, the Sunshine Coast hooker, Smoothie, Tyson Smoothie. He's, um, he's been pretty instrumental in, in a lot of uh, their go forward this year. I, I like a lot about um, what he brings to the squad. Um, the role of a hooker is as certainly evolved over the last sort of five, six years and, and this young fella certainly uh, uh, has fitting into that, that new breed of, of, of young uh, dummy halves. So um, of the, the 15 games he's played, he scored nine tries, which is a pretty good, de uh, decent strike rate for a hooker. Um, makes 31, 32 tackles a game, uh, just under two misses per game uh, as well. Uh, and on average makes about 70, 80 metres uh, every game um, with half of those metres, just under half of those metres coming out of dummy half. So the other half of his metres are made in the middle, uh, either as first receiver or as uh, as a, a, a forward hitting into the line. So, um, yeah, like what he brings to the team. He'll be your weapon. Uh, well, I've actually gone for a similar position, but on the opposite side of the field in the Winter Manly Seagulls. I've gone for Jake Simpkin, the yeah. nine. Yeah. Uh, he featured in this year's Oswald Bank Malmeninga Cup. Uh, also played for the Queensland under-18s and has recently just been signed with the West Tigers. He's only played 12 yeah. games of Colts, uh, but I think that he's going to be the difference. He certainly was uh, last week up against the Cutters. Uh, dynamic, uh, big body, big uh, body. In, in his uh, games, he scored seven tries. He uh, typically has 11 runs out of dummy half. On average, makes 107 metres in a tackling machine. Uh, averages 27 tackles a game. And I think he will be the difference uh, for the winner, Manly Seagulls. And I'm fairly sure that what will motivate him is the fact that he was part of that losing side with the Oswide Bank Melbourne Cup Grand Final for Wyndham. So he'll be sure. my yep. weapon prediction. So we'll see how they go kick off. Not too far away, but on Friday night at the Curial Awards Dinner, the statewide uh, weapon of the year was announced and it happened to be the Northern Pride's Tom McHugh. We've got a nice little highlights reel for him to go into the break and after the break we'll have kickoff to the 2019 Hastings Steering Colts Grand Final. Well, welcome back to Dolphin Stadium. We are just about set for kickoff for the 2019 Hastings Deering Colts decider. Good crowd, really starting to build here at Dolphin Stadium. Just to reiterate, Apsi, it's a sellout. So, unfortunately, if you are looking to head down a little bit later, you won't be able to grab any tickets from the door. As the Sunshine Coast Falcons make their way out to the middle of the park. Can't wait. As we heard from Kev Brasher, they brought the chook pen with them, the winner Manly Seagulls. Yeah, but the Falcons have got Mario down there on the sideline. He's pumped up. He's ready to go. Is he the Falcon? Is he the mascot? Is he? Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, um, the uh, with with the Wynnum Manly supporter bay, I believe it's sold out within about 30 minutes of it opening up. Yeah, yeah, because they've uh, you know they're featuring uh, across oh, all the games, yeah, aren't they? Really? Yeah, that's right. The two big ones, the Hastings Deer and Colts, and in trust Super Cup. Here they come. Grand Finals. Here's the Wynnum Manly Seagulls. You can hear the loud roar. They flocked in numbers. <laughs> How many bird puns are we going to get this afternoon, Kev? Plenty. <laughs> Just, it had to be when the Tweed Seagulls played the Wyndham Manly yeah, Seagulls. Yeah. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to call that match, but... Um, battle of the Birds. It is the Battle of the Birds. Sam Swift, our referee for this one. As we get underway, the 2019 Hastings during Colts decider here at Dolphin Stadium. And the Falcons will receive the ball first. They're gonna run from right to left of your screen. They're gonna run from the north to the southern end in the game. That's Jardine who takes a run for the Sunshine Coast Falcons. Now for Loyero. Playing it back to Smoothie. Middle of the park. That's Chanky in Jersey 20 this afternoon, but playing in the middle of the park is the lock forward. Great carry there from 
the Falcons prop in Jardini, second carry in the set of six. Last one, kick high there from Zanchetta. Oh, a bit of a juggle. They've lost the ball, Winham. What a perfect start here for the Falcons. A nice big kick. There is a bit of a breeze up high, not down, not so much down on the ground, but up high there is a bit of a breeze, so that, that might have just crept up on the fullback there. You'll see here on the replay, it was a good run from Jardini, second in the set, and then Smoothie just went out to Zanchetta. And the kick went high. All right, let's get these scrums right. And for Gardner, Arms just missed time to jump, didn't he? He'd be looking into the sun too, yeah. just quietly. And it should be mentioned as well, Cam, it is hot out there on the ground. It is a toasty afternoon here in Redcliffe. There is a bit of a breeze, but down there on the ground, the breeze is um, not too strong. So It's saying only 25 degrees, but I reckon... Just a little bit warmer than that. Going. Here we are, Sunshine Coast, their first opportunity to attack. Win a manly oh. goal line. Dwan. Oh. Short side play. Looks to take on Dwan for the line. One line. Wave. Wave. He's fallen 10 Go metres short. I thought he was going to get up and just keep oh, running there. He nearly slipped through the tackle. They go centre field. Chanky. They rush up on him, though. That's uh, Clayton Mac who makes the tackle. Smoothie gets in a dummy half. Still three. Not really sure which way. He wants to pass the ball. He says, I'm going to run it myself. And both halves either side of him. Go four. Chanky acting half. Chooses to run the ball himself. Last, tackle, Last one now for the Falcons. Looking good in their second Go. set to the short side. Right. Running the ball. Desperation offload. Comes up with an error. Smoothie. Just couldn't complete. And they'll turn the no, ball over the here ball when they ball get ball out of jail. He was dirty about something there as well, Smoothie, as he um, got up from making the mistake. Took a little, uh, like he was throwing a dart through the ball at the back of uh, his opponent's head there. A little bit of frustration early, but look, signs are looking pretty good for the Falcons. They managed to get some good field position, some good attack. Big task for them now. They've got to get out of their own half. There's Jalen uh, taking any turn up. Played eight short of his own line. Mateus Solid defense. We Here mentioned pre-game win them. I thought they were going to win the middle of the field easily. But the ruck speed. Also Seven last week really seven. shocked the cutters. Square. I tell you what, the Go line speed outside. from the Falcons so far has been impressive as they shift the ball from the, the right to the left. Perry Go goes to ground. Coming out from dummy half is Reese Hoffman now there. On. And they'll be turning to him as they go short again. Outside. As Quinlan goes high here on the last. Kind of just stuck yeah, up there. Murte though one, takes it well. And Winner will be pretty happy with that set. Yeah. Yeah, and look pretty cool under pressure as well. There, Luke Murtag, the, uh, the pullback there from the Falcons. He was uh, <laughs> he had defenders in his face, but he calmed himself, took the ball, took the hit as well. Great carry from Blake Wilson out of dummy half. He makes about 11 metres and earns his side a penalty. He came up with it. Fought the ruck there, won the play of the ball, and win them just trying to slow it down and have been penalised for yeah, it. Yeah, look, it'll be interesting to see how the Falcons go after. Go. Uh, well, you'd be assuming they'll be looking for either a repeat set or points here. They'll have really good field position, so it'll be interesting to see how they go about it, whether they're going to pepper the middle in behind the ruck or whether they're going to go uh, an early shift wide. Falcons certainly on top early in the game. Mind you, we are only four minutes short. Jardine takes a good run. Jake broke together. He's only about 12 short. Smoothie has a bit of a look. He'll go out now to right. Jake off the top. One foot Shannon. One Trying foot. to draw defenders to pass to the short side. He couldn't get the job done. And now for Reynolds. Clear that grip. One foot. Right in front of the post here. Five short. Smoothie. Right side. Steps out. Right Three. side. Oh. Nicely done for. Move. Loyero, again, he's gone to ground. They had numbers out to the right there. Oh, lost oh. it in the play of the ball. Big error for Trent Loyero. Yeah, look, that's a missed opportunity there for the Falcons. I think the um, the right side was stacked and they had two two players left over. If we see here. You need to stay and play when you can, mate. Look, they had the overlap. Just right didn't there. pass the ball, unfortunately. No, it was a good tackle there by uh, Hoffman. Wrapped it up. Just quietly, I think he was trying to milk the penalty, Trent Loiro. <laughs> no, players don't do that. Cam, come on. No way. Put your head down. Put your head down. There we go. Win him again, get out of jail. They haven't obviously been down the under end of the park yet, although it's in early days. But I reckon that's been, I think that was the message from Sam and Winnie. 
to the Falcons boys is we've got to start well early. Oh, you I mean, start so important, isn't it? The first half, win and blue, the cutters off the park last week. It was 30 nil at half time. Yeah. Go to. And aside from you know the result on the scoreboard, it's the you know it's the energy that you zap from your opposition when you keep them under pressure on their own try line. Interesting here, Simpkin running the ball. That early stage wasn't playing as the dummy half. Use the line. He's still not sure. I don't know if this is a play here, but through that whole set, it didn't look like he was slipping into the dummy half role. Anyway, they get a kick away here, and the chase is going to be made by Lejada. Lost legs. Fantastic kick, finds the grass between the winger and the fullback. Winger had to work to get there, so brilliant kick. Let's go down to the touch line now. Kev Brasher, how's it looking down there? Yeah, very physical start to this game. Very evenly poised at the moment. I dare say the Falcons maybe just their noses in front in the very early stages, but you can feel the atmosphere building on the sideline for sure. That's another big carry there from Jardine. He's had some big carries. Early on in this match for the Sunshine Coast Falcons. Again, they're in Wynnum territory. Trent Lawyero. Go for. Five after halfway. Chanky gets a great ball away. Oh. Reynolds breaks the line. He's just oh. got to beat the fullback. Gardner comes up with a big he's, play. He's out. He's out cold. I think Wyatt Reynolds might be in a bit of trouble. I don't think there was anything wrong with the tackle made by Gardner. He's just fallen into it by the looks of it. That's what I think. It'll be an intriguing replay. Here it is. Tell you what, what Wyatt Reynolds, he's come up with 18 line breaks this season so far. So the prop ball doesn't mind breaking the line. And when you get balls like that, well, I think he just fell into it. Oh, jeez. Don't think there's anything wrong with the contact. It, it was high, but uh, there's nothing Gardner could have done there, really. It was high, but it was also Rock. low. You know, he was he was down around his ankles when he caught the contact. So, so you heard there from Sam Swift, nothing will happen bar the, the scrum, which is yep. the right decision. Look, uh, it's going to be a shame for Rob Wyatt Reynolds. Gonna Obviously, he's going to be no, taken off for a HIA, very and very with that sickening okay. collision... I'm not a doctor, but I, I think I can easily say he probably won't be returning this afternoon, which is a huge loss for the Falcons. You wouldn't have thought so. He's only just sort of sat up and now returning to his feet. So that's a good sign. He's up, he's on his feet. Making his way to the sideline. Big play from Shannon Gardner. He needed that otherwise. Reynolds was over. The Falcons would have scored first. And I wonder if, you know, the, the fullback that was looming, looming up on the inside was maybe just a little bit too far away for him to be confident in the pass, which is why he decided to take the tackle. But he also had a player on his on his left as well. So as you can see here, Reynolds is being assisted from the field. He'll go through a head injury assessment, but a bit of claret coming out as well. Could be a big loss. Kevy will have all the details for us, no doubt, when they come to hand. But Nick Ellums on the ground now to replace Reynolds. Head down. Head down. And again, Wynnum get out of jail. Yeah. Okay. Now, how does that work, Cam? If it's if it's not a penalty, does the injury, the HIA, still count as a free? Yeah, it's change? still a free interchange. Yeah. So he'll have 15 minutes now to undergo an assessment, and if yeah. he fails that HIA, uh, that'll then count as an interchange. So. Off him now. Here it holds. The Wynnum Manly Go Seagulls to. now with an opportunity to get out of their own end. They've been parked down here for the, the opening. Here. Seven minutes of play. Full 12 up in your right. Now Rowan, 12 with me. Wait, Stephen. Go four. So back now to Mac. Had options either side on the last tackle. Go. Not late. So they'll go out. Kicking options there for Parslow. He played a part in the Oswald Bank Melbourne Cup final. One of the four players with Reese Hoffman, Jake Simpkin and Harrison Graham all playing a part in the match. Falcons. Keep going, still got his feet. Through Kane Jackson it is. Release him, Ryan! Gotta say the, the Falcons are the, looking the more dangerous team so far, aren't they? They certainly are. Clayton Stan! Seem to be finding just those little bits of space on those edges. Go three. Ten metres short there, Swifty, go another metre. Yep. Momentum's huge in rugby league, Apsi, and it is. the moment the Falcons have got all of it as Chanky plays the ball back to Smoothie again. Bit of a running game from Zanchetta, then went back on the inside. Here's the last now for the Falcons. 
What are they going to come up with? Short side, Zanchetta, a grubber. But they were up in the line there. Uh, was O'Keefe. So he was able to take it well. Hoffman. They're back five, just helping out the forwards. They've had to do a bit of defence early on in the piece. Now it'll go to their big men. That's Brock Richardson. But a dominant tackle there from the Falcons. They drive him back about 10 metres. That's huge. On a player I thought last week was explosive. Simpkin trying to earn a penalty. And he gets one. Oh, wow. What a let off. Come over here. Now, Jardine's been called out here. Rowan, Let's have a listen. Okay, you've ripped his arm back, mate. Okay, it's a chicken wing. It's on report. A chicken wing tackle. And uh, it's been placed on report. Time back on. I didn't see it the first time around. No, but it, neither did I. The ref was in a good spot. Fortunately for Rowan Jardine, on report. Here's the replay here. It was good from oh, Simpkin yeah. there. Oh, yes. Jeez. It's a little bit ugly. <laughs> it's not a good Tell you, But that's the experience of, and, and why the West Tigers have signed Simpkin. You know, the, to have a look at the side, they were on the ropes. And they needed something. We saw a bit like from Cameron Smith last night for the, for the Melbourne Storm. Just a very crafty hooker. Play what was in front of him. Now for Gardner. And this could be the turning point here for, for Wynnum to get down the other end of the park and start to put some of that pressure on the Falcons. Richardson. Might lit the fuse. I don't think he would have been happy with being manhandled before. No. To the short side. Hoffman on the left edge. Gets it on the inside. Quinlan will score first for the winner, Manly Seagulls. Well timed offload from Reese Hoffman on the left edge. And Quinlan puts it all together for the winner, Manly Seagulls, to draw first blood. And look, they didn't need much, did they? There wasn't much space over there, but they found it. Hoffman with a great little left foot step and a beautiful offload. That's pretty to watch. Uh, but we talk about momentum, and that, that's exactly that first attacking set down Falcons end of the park, and they come up with points. And that'll be big for the Falcons. They'd be pretty disappointed that 50. for you know the, the first 13 minutes of the match, yeah. they really dominated the game. Yeah. You know, they'll were, they were put Wynnum, they were, had to defend their own goal on a number of times, and all of a sudden Wynnum come down their, their end of the park once, and again, too big, too strong at the end of the day. And we know what Reese Hoffman's like in, unbroke, in, uh, in, in broken play. Well, he's a big body, isn't he, Reese Hoffman? He's um, a very strong young man. It, he, he doesn't need much space to be able to you know, break a tackle or, or find his way through. So... Um, one thing I did notice in the lead-up to that try, though, the, the line speed of the Falcons has just dropped off uh, a bit since the start of the game. Obviously, we're, you know, we're, what are we, just 12, 13 minutes in, so, you know, maybe a little bit of fatigue starting to creep in. But uh, what a start by the Seagulls. And that's true. Gardner adds the extra two points to make it six points to nil here in the Hastings during Colts grand final live from Dolphin, Dolphin Stadium. Kev Brasher, down to you. With an update uh, with Wyatt Reynolds at the moment. Still up the tunnel at the moment. I'll get back to you as soon as he comes back out with uh, the results of his HIA test. But he talked about weapons before the game, guys. And the reigning weapon of the week last week, Reese Hoffman, he was the man that instigated that try there with a brilliant piece of running. Absolutely. Smoothie, you predicted would be the weapon of the Sunshine Coast Falcons. He's um he's been good. He's just he's giving good service out of dummy half, but he's he's yet to take the line on himself. I'm be looking out for that. Now Winham, a little bit of the ascendancy. They'd be pretty happy to bag first points. Oh, this is a crucial error. You've got to complete. Can the Falcons fire back? Don't play it on him. Go zero. So smoothie, right. A oh, long a ball. ball out. Wilson. What a ball. Blake Wilson gets over. Fantastic vision from Jack Wright. Cut out ball across the face. And Blake Wilson hits back in the following set. And it's going to prove costly that, that error off the restart from Wynnum. Oh, wow. Like, it, it, just have a look at the way that he squares up here, right? Bang. Oh, out in front. 
just had to put some speed into the footwork there and um, down in the corner. Not an easy kick, but might see ourselves with a leveled up scoreline in just a couple of seconds. It's going to be a tough kick for, Ty for Tyson Smoothie, who has done a majority of the kicking when in the Falcons' colours. Goes all right. 76% throughout the season. Yep. This one, though, right in front of the chook pen. <laughs> Don't think they're going to be uh, too gracious with some of the uh, words of encouragement. There, the is, there is a lot of green and red right behind where he is taking this kick from. So Some, some people would think it's Christmas here <laughs> at uh, Dolphin Stadium. Well, it might be for the Seagulls. Who knows? We'd be liking to put together last week's BRL win with uh, a Hastings, Deer and Colts and Intrust Super Cup. Well, yeah, wouldn't it be a party? Back at Seagulls headquarters, my word. The Cougarite tonight. Could be big anyway. Here we go. Smoothie. <laughs> he kicks it alright. Looks oh, for good. Lots it. What pressure. Hey, there's your weapon. He's a big game player, Smoothie. He's played one game of cup footy this year. Yeah. And he's he's played in some some pretty successful teams in the past as well. He's had a couple of seasons both in Melmaninga Cup and in, in Colts uh, at Redcliffe. He uh, spent some time in the NYC as well for the Broncos, so he's he knows what he's doing. The BRL boys have turned up. They've brought the uh, the BRL trophy with them as well. I guess maybe <laughs> just showing your position what silverware looks like. Yeah. Bit of inspiration for the for the boys out on the field. This is what it's a... Uh, how good is it here at Dolphin Stadium? Playing, we just had a bit of a walk around before. Yeah. And Sunday afternoon, people enjoying a couple of 4X gold tins. Yeah, they've tricked it out well. Great afternoon of footy here at Dolphin Stadium. Great to bring you the action live and exclusive on the Q Connect Network. Jardine, he's been huge for the Falcons. In his carries up front. Smoothie comes out of dummy half. And now for Ellums, if you've just joined us, Wyatt Reynolds still off the field with a HIA. But unfortunately uh, for him, he copped a pretty heavy knock from Shannon Gardner. So we don't think he'll be back, but we'll wait for the official results from that head injury assessment. Yeah, look, he had a bit of, you know, a bit of blood coming from, I think, the mouth or nose, and he was down on the ground for a while, but once he was up, he, he looked pretty steady on his feet, so could go either way. Good kick there from the Falcons, just to settle things down, coming from... Uh, well, they, they've got to be gassed. Zan he's playing on the left-hand side, uh, the right-hand side of the field for the Falcons. Well, both sides would have to be. It's far, fairly warm mm. out there. That's in the middle of the park, okay. but at the moment Easy we thought we the go. Falcons, we thought we, we thought the Falcons were certainly um, on top. All of a sudden, win them against the run of play, really in the, the first set. But the Falcons hit right back, and all of a sudden we're back to level pegging again. Yeah. An intriguing Hastings Deer and Colts decider being played out right now. So now for the winner, Manly Seagulls. They've got to get out of their own end as they go to Sorensen McGee. He's been uh, a little bit quiet early on. Go to. Strong. Strong. strong contact there as well. Was Go strong. Simpkin, a dummy half. Parslow. Right Rare to see the 5 8 Stay taking in. a hit up early Square. on in the tackle count. Go four. Well, it was the four tackle, sorry. I thought it was only the third. Sorensen McGee here on the last. last tackle, what are they going to come up with here, Winham? Yeah. I'm expecting a deep kick. Go, not late. Not late. They've gone to Gardner. Oh, he kicks high. That is a foot. monster. It's oh, my a God. And a penalty coming. Yeah. Uh, contact there on Gardner. Just a little bit late from Jardine. <laughs> He's got to be careful his aggression. He's already been placed on report. And then, attempt, a, a, you know, a silly penalty, I guess, in the end. The referee's told him about the contact on the kicker. Nothing late. And I, know you, I know that you uh, want and need to put pressure on the on the playmakers but I didn't think there was too much wrong with it First the only problem I got with it is it did absolutely nothing to the kicker he got straight back up didn't he got straight back up but he also got a monster of a kick away uh, and they were getting the ball back either way so 
I think it's welcomed his aggression, Jardine. It's needed because he's been huge up front, but the message will be just just tone it down a little bit. We don't want to give away these penalties. It's good to be aggressive. Yeah. You don't want to be costly for the team. Parslow. We also want to keep him on the field as well, ideally. Running the footy. Oh, he's juggled it. And lost it. And was it Jardine in there? Might have been. I think he was in the thick of it. They just were handed a, a set of six. And unfortunately, just let it slip away from them, winning with uh, losing the footy. Parzo ran on himself. I don't know whether he was looking to get the ball away. Just got caught by the, the defensive line. I'll tell you what, one way or another, Jardine is going to have an impact on this game. He's certainly not out there to make friends, is he? No. I don't think his intention was ever to make friends with the, uh, the goals from the east side of Brisbane either. It's great to see so much support for the local sides too. You know, yeah. There's so much we've seen the Burley Bears just uh, arrive here at Dolphin Stadium, but I see many people here with uh, Wyndham supporter shirts, Falcons supporter shirts. They made the trip down to Bruce this morning, yeah. no doubt. Yep. Yeah, there's a few Falcons in there, but definitely uh, a strong. There's our random man South fan. It's always one Stop around. It. Where was he? She? She. Yeah, she. There's some Falcons fans on the hill here Legend. at Dolphin Stadium as it starts to really fill up for this sold out Intrust Super Cup decider, the first to be played here at the revamped Dolphin Stadium. It just looks a treat too, doesn't it? Four X flags flying. There's the Falcon Spence, the Burley boys just behind them. There we go. Time back on, two hands Jack. Beat it, mate. Beat it. In, out, clear. So here we go, the Falcons Can to work off their in. own goal line. A dominant tackle, though, by the winner, Manly Seagulls. Big from Clayton Mack initiating that tackle. So now they've virtually got to work Whoa. from end to end. Jardine plays the ball. Now for Chanky. Muscled up here. It's been the call to arms for the winner, Manly Seagulls. Smoothie again. Goes to the middle of the park. Very soon to see Sunshine Coast play. They've really stuck it to them. I thought maybe they'd work on the edges because of how strong the winner middle third is. Yeah. But they've just gone hammer and tong at it. And it's fantastic to see. 40-20 here. Oh, it's a it's huge kick, but it's out on the fall. Oh. I was just thinking before he kicked that, the breeze, if you have a look at the, the 4X flags in the backgrounds, the, the breeze seems to have turned and it's in favour of the Falcons now. We've got some news on White Reynolds, I think, down to you, Kev Brasher. Yeah, boys, official word, White Reynolds has passed his HIA. He will return to the field in jersey number 18. Number 18 for Reynolds. That's huge news for Falcons fans. They'd be pretty happy with that. Absolutely. It looks like he's obviously going to come back on. They get that free interchange because it was really made within the first uh, the 15 minutes. He's looking fired up too. Throwing a few jabs at his little interchange card there. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I won't be quitting my day job anyway to become a doctor either. Just quietly, I thought he was out for all money, but he's passed his test, which is good to see. Here we go. That's uh, Malatoa now on the park. There's the Burley, uh, the Winter Manly Seagulls make a couple of changes. Quinlan. Gardner. On the inside. One foot. Go tackle four. Simpkin to the Going. short side. Easy try. Oh, wow. Lachlan Perry crosses. Fantastic work coming in a dummy half from our predicted weapon, Jake Simpkin. And Lachlan Perry crosses for Wyndham second. Yeah, made it look all too easy there, didn't he? All the good work that the Falcons did in, in keeping them somewhat at bay just picked apart here by Simpkin. Look at that. The two Falcons players that were on him ended up wrong-footed and ended up on their backsides. One thing I've noticed here from the, the winner Manly side is each time they're hoping that uh, Simkin can split the markers because if you watch here, the run just before on the line from Gardner, mm. he, he was able to try and split the A defenders on either side of the ruck. And, that, and that's exactly just what uh, Perry there did. Simkin come out, engage the markers, yep. and Perry just ran straight through the two A defenders on either side of the yep. ruck. Yep. And try time to win a Manly Seagulls, their second for the goals. He must have spotted it too because usually your A defender's nice and tight. And taking that hard inline, 
uh, is, you know, takes a bit of courage. I'll be proactive. But uh, the space was there, and he found it beautifully. A um, couple of changes being made for yeah, both sides. We'll cross down to the touchline with Kev Brasher. I see that uh, uh, Kev Rowan Jardine coming off for his first spell. Yeah, mate, just trying to get confirmation. It looks like they've got another player going off for a HIA, the Sunny Coast Falcons, just here on the sideline. I'll get confirmation on that one shortly for you and get back to you guys. But uh, Malatoa comes on for Winner Manly, and we've got James Robinson coming on as well for Winner Manly. And it is Rowan Jardine, as you said, coming to the sideline. He will be going off for an HIA test. Another Sunshine Coast player to have a uh, head injury assessment. The aggression from Jardine. I don't know where he copped the head knock. He has got it strapped up, so obviously there was some contact somewhere along the lines, but he's been very, very busy in the game. So here we go, this kick, it's high. Only a couple of metres from the back fence, so here we are now. The winner, Manly Seagulls again. When they get down the Falcons end of the park, they score points that could concern the Falcons. They want to limit them down to their end of the park. Yep. I think it's important, though. For the winner, Manly Seagulls here, they complete this set of six as Perry plays it back to Simkin again. Yeah, they won't want to repeat it last time. They need to get to the end of this, even if they kick on the fourth, just get the kick away. Pin the Falcons back down in their own end. Tyson Smoothie making the tackle there on Harrison Graham, another man who was part of that Oswide Bank Malmaning a cup side who just couldn't get the job done over the Tweed Seagulls. Trying to slow the ruck down, Tyson Smoothie. Got away with that one there. Dropping it back on the inside here. Last tackle now for Wyndham. Good defensive effort from the Falcons. They keep them within their own 40 here. Parslow, little grubber. Good chase from either, uh, both sides. Well, they've gone for the strip. There was two in the tackle there. And it's just a silly, silly strip there from Elliot Vincent. I mean, he had the right idea, but it's a two-man tackle. You can't. Uh, get your hands around the ball. and uh, Easy call there from the ref. Easy call. I don't know what he was trying to do. Obviously trying to wrap the ball up. Yeah. Vincent, but I think he might have just let go of it. The Falcons so player. Ruck, Clearly another player in the tackle. Pushing that limit. There, mate. All right, so what have we got? On the line. Wait for the kick. Oh, he just said <laughs> the touch judge there, the ball kid. Well done, young fella. Okay, so now, Lost his legs. Lost legs. the Falcons, Go one. Mark, footy six, back one. again. Looks like they've made a change. One. Oh, error, it's okay, it's gone backwards. Okay, I'd like to have a look at that one. I thought that one just went backwards. Yeah, he lost possession of the footy, but just went backwards. He's not blowing up about it, though. Let's have a look here. There's green to come, have come on. In that dummy half roll. Oh. Struggle to see how, how the bloke who's standing half a metre behind him catches the ball and yet the ball's gone forward. Doesn't yeah, really touch the defender, but anyway, they, they're much closer to the action than we are. We're on the far eastern grandstand. Win them, they get the ball back. Now for Vincent. Offloads though, Parslow. Lost legs. It'll be one to watch. Doesn't mind to bring his running game out. Tanganini Turner play the ball. This is Robinson. Simpkin coming in a dummy half. Quinlan Ooh, through the hands. Gardner links in. Offloads back to Quinlan. Now for Malatoa. Still going the big motor. He's only about six away here. Winham leading by a converted try. Simpkin, dummy half, short play to Butler. Wrap the ball up right in front of the post though. Last one coming up for Winham. Simpkin out the back. Parslow, Sorensen McGee, ball short. And that's the last. They'll turn it over. Not a bad spot though to turn the ball over. No. And they've obviously had success with those short little passes in and around the dummy half area, so around the ruck area. So that's what they tried again um, on either side, but nothing coming of it. They've used both sides of the park, Winham. Yep. A lot of people thought maybe they'd just really load up the, the left edge with Reese Hoffman there. He had a dynamite performance last week up against the Mackay Cutters and 
but it's good to see them using both sides of the paddock. Yeah, the temptation is always there to throw it to someone like Hoffman. But in, in weather like this where it's so hot, it's going to be a grinding game. You, you don't want to burn him out too early. I was just about to mention that we've really set, set ourselves in for an arm wrestle here. We have. That's a brilliant kick. It's a fantastic kick. The goalpost helps things out as well. It's picked up by Tanganini Turner. Smoothie making another tackle though. He averages 32 tackles a game. He's been very busy. In this to side oh, of the ball wow. comes free. Falcons pick up. Greens with it. Just got to keep their keep their head here, the Falcons. Well, the Falcons, I think, are ahead in the game despite the scoreboard being against them. Wyndham have just had nice passages of play where they've been able to capitalise. Where the Falcons have really dominated this game. Thank you. So they go out and through the hands. Now for Borg. Left edge plays it quickly. That's right. Short play through then. Reynolds. Close to the line. Green. Quick play the ball. Intercepted. Taken, but he was offside. Much to the displeasure of the <laughs> Chook Pen. The Chook Pen on wheels, we could say. He's dived. Well, he jumped early. Yeah. There was an acting half coming in there. Okay, you can't do it. You have to wait till the acting half acts. Well okay. explained there by yeah. referee Sam Swift. No, there was interference prior to that. Yeah. It's tricky when you're in that marker or A defender spot when they're playing the ball right on the line, not to just, you know, put your hand out and have a little crack at the ball. So Reynolds. Go one. Outside. Go to the right hand side of the field. He had to make that tackle, Hoffman. It's a little high, it's crept up. He shot out of the line, Reese Hoffman. It, it was a make or break play. They've just got to compose themselves on the goal line here, the winner Manly side. This way? Okay, there you go. I'll kick for touch. Up here. Right but I think here. it's a, a, a right. time here for the Falcons where five minutes to go right. in the game, in the first half, they should know, well, realistically, whilst we're not on, the, on top on the scoreboard, mm. uh, we're certainly winning this battle here, so let's just grind it out. Force and error from the defensive line. They turn it back to Reynolds. Strong carry from him. He's trying to beat the defence. He's still alive. He'll finally go to ground. Green, a dummy half. Fires it to the right side. Out. Uh, that's Nelson, the new man, in. Green. Zanchetta on the inside. Oh. Loyero! Oh. He got there. Ball down. Falcons score their second. Trent Loyero crosses for the equaliser. Geez, that was it looked a lot like the Papali try underneath the sticks on uh, on Friday night. Just a big body crashing in towards the traffic. When you go on the huddle. Bit of footwork from the big man as well. We're about to be locked up. It was a great line he ran. Yeah. yeah. Back on the inside. Similar play to his opposite number, Perry ran the other end yeah. of the field. Yep. Back Against towards the, the rock. Yep. Hard to defend because it, it, all it takes is to be slightly off balance and you just lose all the power out of your you know, out of your legs and your shoulders and trying to stop a big man that's coming at you at your weak shoulder. It's, uh, yeah, it's almost impossible. The best hope you've got is just trying to, you know, maybe a little ankle tap as he's flying past. <laughs> Mario's at it. Yeah, no worries. Mario must be dangerously dehydrated in that suit. <laughs> Luckily, it's the grand final. I don't know if I want to be in the suit next week. Yeah, no, burn it. <laughs> New suit for next year. Hold it. Tell you what, the Falcons, Hastings, Steer and Colts side would be really wanting to, to bring some success for the club. The Intra Super Cup side really dominated the competition. However, their last four Super weeks, nice. they probably... Don't want to look back at that. I mean, they finished with a draw against Ipswich yeah. and then got upset by the Blackhawks. Narrowly defeated the East Tigers and then obviously last week 
Burley was just too big, too strong, and rolled yeah. over the top of him. A team who this year went through the st start of the season undefeated for quite a number of weeks. I think it was 15 or 16 weeks yeah. before Redcliffe knocked them off. I think it was at this very ground. I might have been up at Sunshine Coast no, it Stadium. Was. It was, it was the at the coast. stadium, sorry. Yep. So all of a sudden now the club are hoping for some sex success for the, the Hastings Deer and Colts side. Wait, go on, David, push up. One. I think a no. huge inclusion after that HIA Reynolds getting back on the field has really boosted the forward pack. Obviously, Jardine's still off at that HIA at the moment. Kev? Jardine to return to the field. They're just waiting on final confirmation. The other good news for the Falcons is both of their interchanges have been for HIAs. So they're technically still at zero, whereas Wynn and Manly have made four changes. Yeah, wow. Did you say four, Kev? Sorry? Four, correct. Four changes, wow. They've only got eight. Where the Sunny Coast Falcons have got a full book. Last tackle, David! So that is big. In the Falcons at the moment. Here we go, they've deflected. Quinlan's played the ball. He picks up. He's away. Foot race. Murate chasing from the far end, as is right. But seven on seven there. The two halves combined. That's monstered. Milking, milking. Go to. Well, play off the back of this, a fantastic Ball runaway. Gardner, Parslow, through the hand. Sorensen McGee backs himself, goes over the line, and he'll score a try. I thought the ball might have touched the ground prior to that. The officials oh, don't brilliant. think so, and they're happy with that four-pointer. Huge play again against the runner play. Winner Manly score to take the lead back. Look, the Falcons scrambled so well. They, uh, they almost got the job done, but just too much class on the edges. Here it is, Sorensen McGee. Oh, oh did is, he break the tackle? That is a dead set double movement. All momentum in the tackle, Jack. Well, they've called all, all momentum, momentum the that's the call. Okay. Interesting one, what's your take? They're lucky to score with them. Yeah. Obviously the, the match officials are there, and they obviously have a better feel for the game. And here we are in slow-mo. He's gone down there. He does have the motive, momentum. And do you think that he promoted the ball? Because that's the ruling, that he promoted the ball. He's obviously rolled over. Do you think in the contact? And obviously, which watched it in slow motion there. I mean, the question is, did he... Would he have ended up there if would he, he ended up there? that second rolling movement? It is what it is. But, I mean, hats off. Quinlan taking that intercept again. Well, actually, he didn't intercept it, sorry. He, he played with it on his foot. And away he went. It was a good chase there from Jack Wright. Uh, I, I thought they'd almost done enough there, but it's a seesaw, isn't it? It is. It's a big try, too, in the scheme of the game. Oh, Gardner uses the left upright to get it over the post. Big points because it's right on half time and 18 points to 12. The winner, Manly Seagulls, leading the Sunshine Coast Falcons here at Dolphin Stadium. You can hear the chook pen roaring in the background, as you'd expect. <laughs> Big play there as we have a quick look at the summary. Uh, we're going to have out actually very soon. Kev Brasher uh, is about to catch up with the, the man of the moment, Shannon Gardner. So we'll put that on hold and we'll cross over now to Kev Brasher, who is with the man of the minute, Shannon Gardner. Here we are with Shannon Gardner, mate. Really crucial try in half time. How are the boys feeling heading into yeah, the break? We're feeling, feeling really young, young. feeling on top. We just need to keep completing our sets and, and getting through them and hopefully come away with the chocolates in the end. A lot of winning manly support here today, of course. We've got the interest game coming up straight after. How important is it to have the chook then here? Oh, it's, it's really important. The community's been behind us all year and, and for them to travel down and fill out all the, all the seats there, it's, 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 it's massive for us. Hopefully we get the win and then Cup get the win. That's it, mate. Good luck. Right. Good stuff in the first half. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Thank Cheers. you. And Kev also with the Sunshine Coast halfback in Jack Wright. Here for Sunny Coast skipper, mate. That's a tough one on right on half time to go down by six points. How are the boys feeling going into that break? Um, I think we're feeling pretty good, actually. Still, still confident. Um, we just got to hold the footy. We hold the footy, we're rolling through them. Like, they've had all the ball and they're only out by six, so we're not worried. We're good. How confident are you? If you get that fair share of footy in the second half that you can run over and win I this think game. we can just, yeah, we keep rolling through the middle. We're rolling through the middle pretty well, so I think we're fitter than them, so. See how it goes. Really appreciate it, mate. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Thank you. I think Jack Wright had the right attitude there. He said that uh, at the end of the day, we've had all the ball. And that, and that has been the story, uh, Apsi. They have had all the ball in the first half, the Sunshine Coast Falcons. I think in this game, uh, they're leading the momentum battle. 
Absolutely. win them every time I've scored basically against the run of play. Or they've got a, they've had an attacking set their first down uh, Sunshine Coast end of the park, and uh, it has just been uh, all too easy for them. Just before we cross out to Kelly Jury and to Rowan Sawyer, we'll have a quick look at uh, the break. Uh, David Quinlan first to score in the tenth minute. The Falcons hit back in the, the next set, basically Blake Wilson in the twelfth, Lockie Perry then in the twenty-first, Troint Loero in the thirtieth, and then Drayden Sorensen McGee the thirty-third. Uh, for Gardner, he's kicked three from three, Smoothie two from two. An exciting 35 minutes awaits us. But we'll head back down to Camp Bracia now, who is joined by Kelly Jury from Hastings Steering and the QRL Chief Operating Officer, Rowan Sawyer. All right, and we're back here on the sideline. And there was some really exciting news during the week about Hastings Steering and their uh, extended partnership with the QRL. Do you want to tell us a bit about it? Yeah, look, Hastings Deering are committed to supporting the communities in which we operate and um, the partnership with the QRL has provided an exceptional platform over the last few years for us to do so. So we're delighted to be able to extend that partnership for another three years. The under-20s especially, how important is it to be with these young guys and be a part of this? Oh, absolutely. You know, rugby league is, is you know, what brings our communities together and these young men and the young women within these clubs are so important to those communities and, and we are committed to supporting them and making sure they can stay in those local communities and follow their careers, be it in sport or mining and construction. Absolutely. And there is some of that crossover in this competition. I know there's a player up at Mackay who is an apprentice with Hastings Steering and he's also playing in this competition. How good is it to see that crossover? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when we brought the under-20s back in under the QRL from the National Championship, Hastings Deering were the first people to jump on board. Um, obviously, to have them extend and be part of it um, shows how important it is to us, but also to them to support young players um, and give them an opportunity to study and play footy at the time, same time and obviously get out there and earn a career at the end of, end of football. And they'll also be visible in all the TV games as well, sponsoring the Man of the Match Award, that going up from 250 to $500 per game. How good is it to see that partnership expand, not just for the 20s, but for the big boys as well? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, um, to play at this level is tough. Um, to play in Trust Super Cup is even tougher for these guys. And to be picked the best on field during that time is a, is a pretty exceptional space. So Hastings Deering all about performance and rewarding people for performance. So to up the Interest Super Cup, uh, a Man of the Match award from Hastings Deering is exceptional. And the guys up there will be competing week in, week out now to win that big prize. Big thanks to both of you. Uh, we look forward to seeing this partnership extend for the years ahead. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks very much, Kev, with Kerry Jury and uh, Rowan Sawyer there. Exciting news there with Hastings Steering extending the partnership for the next three years with Queensland Rugby League. An exciting day here at Dolphin Stadium. We've got 35 minutes remaining of the 2019 Hastings Steering Colts season. We're at 18 points to 12. The winner, Manly Seagulls, leading the Sunshine Coast Falcons. And then the big one coming up at 3 o'clock this afternoon, the Interest Super Cup decider between the winner, Manly Seagulls, and the Burley Bears. Mick Hillier caught up with Channel 9 commentator Scott Sattler a little bit earlier to preview today's big clash. Hello everyone, it's uh, Scotty Sattler here from the Channel 9 telecast of the Intrust Super Cup Grand Final today. Of course it's moved to Dolphin Stadium as opposed to Suncorp Stadium over the last few years which I think has been a great move by the Queensland Rugby League. A fantastic atmosphere here this afternoon. It's been building with a great itinerary of, of games all across the afternoon. And uh, it looks like it's going to be a sellout here at Dolphin Stadium this afternoon in an inwards of around 10,000 people. Now, this game, of course, uh, so much depending on this game going through to next week's state championship as well on NRL Grand Final Day. But both these sides, they did meet in the first week of the finals. It was the Burley Bears who were successful against the Seagulls that day. They earned the right to have the weekend off. The Winter Manly Seagulls, well, they've had to take the hard road, the long road to Grand Final Day here this afternoon. They are battle-hardened, but they're playing up against the side. The Burley Bears, who were able to beat the King Kong of the competition last week, the Sunny Coast Falcons. It'll be an amazing game here this afternoon. So many matchups across the park. Curtis Rowe up against Edenay Gebby. Uh, there's also Deloise Hoyder up against Sammy Saluma. Sammy Scarlett up against the Petro Sivanaceva medalist in Jamal Fogarty throughout the week. And of course, Luke Page, one of the most passionate players we've seen in the Intrust Super Cup. He'll lead the Burley Bears here this afternoon. So make sure, viewers, if you're going to watch this game, make sure you get across to Channel 9, 3 o'clock this afternoon for all the live and exclusive coverage. Well, how exciting. The big clash between the Winter Manly Seagulls and the Burley Bears is going to be at 3 o'clock this afternoon. You can catch all of the live coverage on Channel 9. Absy, who are you tipping? For the, the for big the, one. The big one. Oh, it's... Burley or Wyndham, quickly. I'm going to go Burley. Burley? Yep. I, I think Burley just too. But uh, 
the, uh, the, the QRL team have put a nice little video to get us in the mood as well for today's big game. More to go. We're very much looking forward to the Intra Super Cup Grand Final. We mentioned uh, kickoffs at 3.15, but all the live coverage exclusively on Channel 9. So be sure to tune in and watch that clash here at Dolphin Stadium. Fantastic day. The grandstand filling up over on the western side, the Des Webb stand. Cameron Saladinaps and Kevin Brasher joining you here on the Q Connect Network for the Hastings Zirin Colts Grand Final. Kev, how are you seeing it down on the sideline? Mate, I'm looking forward to this second half. That was a really evenly poised first half. That good try right on half time was so crucial for winning Manly. But I have got confirmation Rowan Jardine will return from his HOA test. He will start the second half. And they have so far made zero interchanges because their only changes have come as a result of those HIAs. One thing we've seen up here, Kev, is that the Falcons, although they're behind by a converted try on the scoreboard, they are dominating the game. And I think that's something Jack Wright said in the interview we did just before halftime as well. And I think they can feel that and they know that. If they get an even share of possession in the second half, they've got the strike power to trouble this side. As the Sunshine Coast Falcons make their way back out to the middle of the park. If we play trading places here, Apsi and your... Uh, let's go to the Wynnum coach. They're ahead at the moment, 18 points to 12. Uh, Joe O'Callaghan, what have you said to the troops at halftime? Uh, well... One thing is going to change for them in this second half is that they're going to have a breeze at their back by the looks of it. Um, and I'd be wanting to use it to their advantage because the Falcons did it a couple of times well in the first half. Uh, and I think that's something that Wynnum could use to their advantage really well. So I'll be uh, looking for good kicks. Um, and then off the back of those kicks, really strong defensive sets uh, and keep the Falcons down their own end because when they're down their own end, um, they've struggled uh, to make too many metres. So... Kev Brasher, if you're Sam Mawini for Sunshine Coast, what have you said at halftime? Panic. I think they've got a couple of things up their sleeve, especially with all those extra interchanges. You'd have to assume Wynnum will tire and that the Falcons will have a little bit extra in the tank. So my message would probably be stick with it, um, hang on to the football and understand that if it gets down to it in the back end, they'll probably have more in the lungs. Kick off to the second half for the Hastings during Colts Grand Final. Live here at Dolphin Stadium. Wynnum, let the ball bounce. This time running from right to left on your screen in the second half towards the league's club side of Dolphin Stadium. Shakes out of play. It's possible. Sorensen McGee there. Looking to creep a couple of extra metres. Simpkin. Dummy half. Creeps in only eight metres short now of the halfway line. Plays it back to centre field. Out the back, Quinlan. Gardner. Chimes in nicely again. Go for Mark is a square. Good offload, Quinlan. Waiting and acting half. Or giving it off to Robinson. Last one now coming up for the Seagulls. Through the hands. Choose to work the ball. Pass though. Kicks it. It's been touched. Taken by Murtar though. And a good opening set from the winner, Manly Seagulls. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, they got to their kick. Um, second tackle now for the Falcons, and they're still only on their 10-metre mark. So uh, the Falcons Go in a l oh, under a little bit of pressure here, but Release. Go three, not too bad. I think that's what they would have spoke about at halftime, the fact that whilst we're ahead on the scoreboard, and that try just before oh, halftime was huge for them, but yeah. they're really trailing the game. The Falcons have dominated. Ball. They've been all over Wynnum today. Which I thought would be the complete opposite way. I, I yeah. thought that the Falcons, I thought, would have a go, but I just thought Wynnum would really just be too big, too strong, and and, and muscle up against the Falcons. It's taken very, very well. It was uh, O'Keefe, the winger, coming in to take it. Now for Hoffman. I think maybe another thing, too, is that Reese Hoffman, they might utilise, so you're trying to sneak a couple of minutes, they might utilise him a bit more. He's a little bit quiet. Here, yeah, I would. I would. He, he didn't have too much work to do in the first half. Obviously, he set up that first, uh, second try, was it, I think. But um, he's, uh, he's certainly got the, the right attributes to blow this game right, wide open if he uh, can get the ball just a little bit more. Stevens, Stevens. Want a penalty here. Trying to milk one. And <laughs> Manly Seagulls, the Chook Pen firing up as well. They want a penalty. 
Last tackle here. Whoa. Coming up for the win of Manly Seagulls. Parslow running the ball again. A lovely offload, but he lost his legs. He's been able to get back up. Sorensen McGee spoils the ball, you could say. Out the back, still alive on the last tackle. Gardner's had to kick it up high. And nothing kick at the end of the day, and they get a 20-metre restart. Well, we could have a... Oh, he is. He's gone. It's a professional foul. Two weeks in a row now. Gardner's been sent to the sidelines for 10 minutes for a professional foul. He was binned last week as well. The good news was that Wynnum didn't concede any points with 12 men on the park. But that's huge. Okay. It's, not, it's not NRL, so it's from the point of the infringement 10 metres out. Okay, In fact, so it wasn't Gardner. Sorry, I thought it was. It was O'Keefe. My apologies. Okay. It looked like it was the fullback, but there I can see Nate. Sorry, oh, I do apologise. There's Gardner shouting orders. So... Nevertheless, they have been sent for 10 minutes. Ryan O'Keefe, and again, Wynnum, like we mentioned, they were forced to defend with 12 men last week for 10 minutes. They didn't concede any points, but that's huge. And just silly, 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 silly. And in the context of the game, you know, have the Falcons still haven't made an interchange yet. They've now got a one-man advantage for the next 10 minutes. If the Seagulls manage to win this game with those couple of things stacked against them, it would be a massive, massive result. All of a sudden, again, the Falcons play off the back of that penalty. A great run from Reynolds. Jardine back on the park. Great ball. Almost got away. Oh. Zanchetta oh. broke away. Luke Murta under the posts. Falcons back in it. 18-16 kick to come. How good is this? The offload. Rowan Jardine had a great carry there, and then Zanchetta, a nice flick pass here. Bang, flick, Murta under the post, they're back in it. 18-16, big play. Yeah, look, so Jardine obviously featured very heavily in the first half, but mainly with his defence, he was, he was bruising players out there, but then he's come out in the, first, in the second half with some silky little hand... Uh, it's a silky little pass, some good hands, and we're under the post. It's about to be 18 all. Both props have played well for, for Sunny Coast today, and uh, as Kev spoke about at half time, they've used no interchanges. Due to those HIAs to both Reynolds and Jardine, they've still got a fresh book of changes. So, with no stoppages either, I, um, I wouldn't be taking too much time with this kick. We want to. Um, no, there is time out in the. Under 20s. Oh, there is? There is time okay. in this game. Yeah, you're online. I want to use as much of that uh, that time while you're a man up. Well, that's right. I don't think they'll be... Uh, they won't be running the 100 metre race, that's for sure, to the uh, halfway line. Win a Manly Seagulls. No, they'll be... <laughs> they'll be taking it nice and easy. Smoothie adds the extras on top, back locked up at 18 apiece. The Hastings during Colts decider. Now, should we have an incident where we go into Golden Point? Well, the extra time period is Golden Point. Okay. So we got that clarity this morning. Yep. Back to you, Kev Brasher. So yeah, the message at halftime for the Sunshine Coast Falcons from the coach was, we've been in this position before, we know how to win tough, stick to what we know and we can get them in the back end. So very confident after two good semi-final wins. Coach Sam. Ma Winnie would be fairly happy with that try there. And I tell you what, something that's blown me away at this game is the fact that the Falcons are winning the middle third. And I just didn't think that today would happen. I just thought Wynnum would really dominate and fal the Falcons to win would have to use uh, their edge thirds. But not to be. I just wonder, because the Seagulls tries, their points have come almost all from long range. So there hasn't been too many kind of repeat sets or pressure that's built on their own try line. So, you know, um, they haven't had to do as much defending to be that behind on the scoreboard. That's right, they haven't built from it. They haven't, it's all been against the run of play. Yeah. Another penalty. Cool. Hand on the ball penalty. Things are starting to turn a bit here, aren't they? Mm. Things are looking ominous. Kick for touch, sails over the eastern touch line. So they take the tap here. Moyero scored that huge try in the first half. 
Lost that. Oh no. That was just a lapsing concentration there for Loy Wright. I thought he might have been injured. He was just laying there for a second. He was prone and next minute the ball comes out the back. And have a look here. He was just prone. I, I don't know what he was doing. And obviously he's just... Oh, there might have been some sneaky hands there from Jackson Lott. But he didn't fight the play of the ball. So I can get where the referee... Let's go, boys. You don't need a lock. Right, heads down. Let's go. Up and Jen, we have the benefit of replay. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That I just feel like the, the pressure valve just got released just a little bit there. Jardine making it a little bit difficult for his opposition packing the scrum. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Here we Goes to Malatoa. That's a good carry from him. They try and dominate the ruck here, the Falcons. But Malatoa was able to win it. Gardner remembering that Wynnum have 12 men at the moment, utilising the numbers on the right-hand side of the field. They slide well, though, the Falcons. That was very, very well read. But all throughout the match so far, when the, Fal oh, when the Wynnum Manly Seagulls have been down this end of the park, they've scored points. Parslow tried to... Breakthrough with his running game. Now for Butler. Last tackle move. What are they going to come up with here? Ten short of the line. Watch the kick. They go to Simpkin. Oh. A great ball. He's involved again. Malatoa scores. Jake Simpkin again coming in a dummy half. And it is just like a broken record. The winner Manly Seagulls tries at the moment. Off the back of the play. That's, it's just against the runner play really. They score again. Absy, talk us through it. Simpkin, his, his pass selection here is phenomenal. Sees that there's a little bit of space in beside the post. He's got players stacked up out the back who look like they're getting ready to chase a kick, but hits the big man. A smart play by Simpkin. I think we were pretty right in, in suggesting that both Jake Simpkin and Tyson Smoothie would be our weapons in this match. Simpkin has, you know, he's just been smart around the ruck. He really has. You know, early on when they were on the ropes, he was able to get a penalty. And, and after that, you know, just the way he's able to engage, engage the markers and I guess just fill the defence. He's very deceptive, a good run, engages the A defender there. You can see he made him second guess the A, B defenders. The A defender was sitting there going, am I going to have to tackle him? Is he going to try and run and score? Leaving him indecisive, having to play. He made the defensive decision to go to Simpkin. Yeah. Easy pass to the big man and uh, Malatoa crosses. And win them back in front. It's a seesawing game, literally. It has been tit for tat. Yep. It's um, the I think the outside players really sold it well there that they were going for a kick. They were all pointing towards the the try line, saying kick it through. They were all calling for the ball. So I, I dare say a couple of those defenders were in second, you know, in in, in doubt about which way it was going to go. So really clever play by Simkin. Now for Gardner. Got the kicking duties. Hoffman's done a majority of the kicking, but Gardner this time round will add the extra two to the tally. 24 points to 18 here at Dolphins Stadium. The crowd really starting to build for the big clash at 3 o'clock between the Seagulls and the Burley Bears. First time we've been here at Dolphins Stadium, the revamped Dolphins Stadium. Nice little boutique stadium built here on the northern suburbs of Brisbane, the Moreton Bay region, the atmosphere. It's brilliant, isn't it? The buzz, how good. It's electrifying. <laughs> Mind you, you, uh, you'd be forgiven for thinking this was perhaps the Seagulls' home ground today. There's a lot of Seagull supporters here. I'll tell you what, the Winner Manly Seagulls have really struggled after the restart. They were lucky to get away with that. It was backwards, but it's important to complete, I think. Because they haven't built pressure through the match. Butler now was able to bounce off the first line of defence. Oh, jeez. Tried to slow it down. That's a huge penalty because they get that completed set now and can advance their way up the field. Kev, down to you. 
So the Sunshine Coast made the first two official changes. We've got White Reynolds coming off the field, Mateus Chanky coming on, Zach Green going off, and we've got Justin McCorere coming on as well. So that's big though that the Falcons have uh, only made two changes. Where I see Winnem are about to make their fifth. Could play a big part in this match. It's a rather warm day here at Dolphin Stadium, 25 degrees, but uh, no doubt uh, sideline, it's a few degrees warmer. Fantastic day of footy, Dolphin Stadium. Queensland Rugby League Grand Final Day, and this one here, an arm wrestle. Hastings, Deering, Colts. Winner with the ball at the moment. Simpkin again, pleading for a penalty. We go to Malatoa. He's in the middle of the puck, Simpkin again. The right hand side, pars low. It was a low percentage play there. He was very lucky, pars low. He's loved to take it to the line every time. And if it comes off, it's it's magical. But didn't come to fruition. However, they get the ball back. You just saw the chook pen on wheels. <laughs> They're into it. Kev. So Winham had just made effectively a double change. It was their fifth interchange, but they're off Perry on. But O'Keefe comes back from the Simbin, so they're back to full 13 players on the field. That 10 minutes went rather quickly. They scored a try in the process. Yeah. I guess it nullified the Simbin because the Falcons did score as well. So effectively no points were scored during his time off the field. Quinlan goes to Hoffman here on this left edge. Simpkin again, dummy half and lot. They want one more. Short side, Simpkin, Quinlan throws the dummy. Oh. They get numbers around the ball though. Zen Cheddar underneath that footy there. Oh, they put pressure on Gardner, smoothie. Comes up and cleans him up. Here's the last one for Wynnum. They'll go short. Simpkin at first receiver. Oh, no. Didn't get the kick to how he wanted it. This might, this might be zero tackle two here. I think they said he missed it. He did. So they get a seven tackle set from effectively the 20 meter line here. It's really in a dummy half. Now for Jackson. They lose it though. Robinson comes up with it. And there's a player down injured. Boys, a bit of push and shove. However, there is a Wynnum player down in back play at the moment. The Chook Pen in full flight. It's going to be a scrum to win Manly. <laughs> First infringement over here by Sunshine Coast. Go back 10. Yeah. So you, we'll see what's going on yeah. here. Back 10. <laughs> It's a scrum winner, Manly. I've just got an injured player. I think they're saying they didn't gain any advantage from the knock on. Obviously, they were taken back about 10 metres. Happy, mate. I'll go off. Yeah. We're not quite sure exactly who the injured player is at the moment. Has he got time? Yeah. Just let me know, please. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on him. Might be Butler down at the moment. Oh, he's on. No, he's off. Butler's come off, so it's not him. But it looks like uh, Clayton Mack might be getting himself ready to come back on. Kev, can you shed any light on the player down in back play at the moment? Yeah, I'm just making my way down to the 30 metre line to see if I can get an angle and see a number here. Not at this stage, guys. Obviously, he's on screen at the moment, but we're not up to that stage of recognising players by faces in the Hastings, Deer and Colts. A rather happy Wynnum bench. Yeah. 
We got a HIA. Okay, we do. I'll give you time to get someone on. Okay. Seen better Boys, days. We got a scrum in here to win a manly. We got a double knock on. Yeah, he's not looking the best, so he'll uh, go for another head injury assessment. Winham do get, uh, I guess, an interchange to help things out a little bit, though. They can use this to their advantage. We've had a number of HIAs this match, but it's just been a brutal game. It I'll has. tell you what, I don't want to be out there playing today. No, I'm, I'm very I'm, happy being up here. Very much enjoying the commentary <laughs> box. It's been a cracking game, Kev. Jackson Lott, the injured player, taken from the field. Number 14 for the Seagulls is off for an HIA, so a free interchange play for Matt coming back on the field. Off the back of the scrum here, the Seagulls leading this arm wrestle. That is the Hastings Deering Colts grand final live from Dolphin Stadium. He trusts to the cup final to follow this live on Channel 9 from 3 p.m. Supporters here at Dolphin Stadium thoroughly enjoying this one as they work the ball from left to right back to Hoffman. On this left edge, he's been certainly more involved in this second 35. Simkin coming at a dummy half, and it's Malatoa trying to score his second try of the day. Another penalty. He was just told to get up quickly, and they've placed their hand on the ball. Well, the call might be here to take the two. I, I don't think so, but I think that is going to be the call. They are going to take the two. I think that is the call. That's what the trainers have signaled. Obviously, points are valuable to bag in this game, but yeah. I. One, one point on this, though, is that Wynnum have really struggled to put back to back sets together, and this could have been their opportunity. And in saying that, I think they've known how ferocious the defensive line has been for the Sunny Coast Falcons, and they want to bag the extra two points. Also, with this game being a tit for tat at the moment, yeah. it does give the extra two point lead. Yeah, with the way the game's gone so far, you would expect that the Falcons will score again at some stage. So to have that, just that little slight edge on the scoreboard could be enough. Interesting to see uh, that Gardner has now got the kicking duties. Hoffman is usually their number one choice kicker, but Gardner can kick two. He's an option on the last play. He, typically one of the three options with Parslow and Quinlan also doing Majority of the quick kicking, though, it Parsley loves to run the ball. So this, you'd expect Gardner to put this over. Good. To make it 26 to 18 now, seven. To have 17 minutes, just over 17 minutes remain in this Hastings, Deering's, Colts grand final. That's Alan. Crowd really starting to build. Plenty of uh, Burley support. Officially a sellout today. Bounces a few times again. Win them with their restarts. They've got out of jail again there, but that is something that uh, wouldn't be too happy with today. Oh. Well, here we go. Add the back plate. Hey, well, this yeah. okay. had a strike call from the touch judge, so another uh, winning player will be sent to the sin bin should we follow the precedent. But you're not allowed the open, open-handed uh, strike these days. So for Clayton Mack, we didn't see it. I was too focused on the play, and all of a sudden, in back play, it was erupting. Good work by the touchy to stay on okay. on the ruckus. Well, yeah. uh, two of these officials are part of the Oswald Bank uh, Malmeninga Cup final. Uh, Marcus Fitzgerald was. He was hit off the ball. We'll just have a listen. Okay. It was late as well, but he retaliated and struck with a fist, number 10. He struck with Winner. a fist? Yep. Okay. All right. Clayton, captain. So he will sit down for 10 minutes, Clayton Mack. The contact on you did not warrant a punch. Okay, you, no, no, no. You've struck him in the face. Okay, you can have 10 minutes. 
So he's had his marching yeah, orders. He struck him here, you cannot do that. You Late can't Mac. hit him with that, so not suspicion order, mate. Is it out penalty? No. Is it out penalty? No. He's hit him with the on suspicion, mate. What about the hit with the on suspicion? And they turn the ball over. So it was a poor start to the set after the penalty goal. And now all of a sudden, the winner, Manly Seagulls, are going to be forced to defend with 12 players. This way, it's again. Again. There was a little bit of confusion there. I think even some of the players didn't know what happened. Wait. There we go. So Smoothie takes the tap. Very strong contact on... Makira Ray. Smoothie. Short oh. side. They can't jump out of the line like that with a man short. Sunny Coast scores. Stephen Borg crosses. And they hit back. 26 22. Kick to come. Be very careful here you see here, Apsi. They just, it, you've got to make the tackle. They're already a man short. And unfortunately, just got caught ball watching oh, Vincent. Well there. And he capitalised Borg. I think because he, he caught the ball sort of up in the air and he was off his feet. I think that might have just distracted the defender a little bit and didn't know how to approach him because he spun out of the tackle and he was almost on the try line. Given the current situation, mate, we just need to be high with that. Okay. Yeah. Give good advantage, give that distance. Yeah. And As we predicted. Yeah. Borg, too big, too strong on the left edge and again it's proved costly because uh, with O'Keefe put in the bin for 10 minutes they conceded points although they did score one as well so it nullified it however this time round will it prove costly Kev? Well you'd have to say with the player down Sunny Coast has still got five interchanges up their sleeve it would be a Herculean task for them to hold on here Sunshine Coast has got a golden opportunity to come and win this grand final They've really dominated the game, although they're still behind on the scoreboard. The kick successful, though. To your point, Kevin, we, we spoke about interchanges all game. I guess it does help Winham's interchange because he'll come back. Mac with about uh, eight minutes to go, and at least he'll have ten minutes to sit down and cool himself, although I don't think Joey Callaghan's looking at the situation like that. <laughs> that was a really important kick there. From Smoothie, into the breeze, 10 in. Not the easiest kick in the world, but he nailed it. Got a two-point ball game again. It's important the Falcons just play smart here. Yeah. Complete their sets, get to a kick, and then put the pressure back on Winham. That's what they've done for most of the match. So here we go. The final... 15 minutes of the Hastings during Colts season for 2019. And only two points separate the top two teams. Wright chooses to run the ball himself. They'll go Zanchetta. He goes high. Tough kick. Gardner chasing it. Takes it well, though. There is a bit of a swirling breeze. Here at Dolphin Stadium, and you saw that he looked a little bit unsure of himself, Shannon Gardner, but he was able to take it well. Winner Manley about to That's make another change. To Richardson about to come on for his second Good. stint. Still Ball two. three. No, 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 no. Going backwards. Oh. Here he goes. Simpkin. Great support there. He was chopped down. O'Keefe. Simpkin, trip there, tries to run again, back through the A defenders. Again, Winham. They just are able to get something out of nothing. Quinlan drops it through. That's Perry. He's the last. Simpkin, Quinlan, indecisive. Gets caught. Oh. I think it was important there, Winham. They just had to play smart. Kick into the uh, in goal area, force a repeat set, and also choose time off the clock. Yeah, it was it was funny. They were almost on every play. They were appealing for a penalty. Probably just need to stop worrying so much about what the ref's going to do for them and start worrying about how they're going to end their set. It's lifted. The intensity in the crowd have lifted. This game, this intensity is lifted. There's 12 and a half minutes remaining in the season. May have some high contact here. 
Even if the tank's empty, you've just got to push through. That's it. This is where adrenaline will get you home. It's been a fantastic game of footy. We hope you've enjoyed it here on the Q Connect Network. I don't think there was anything in that. It's some solid contact from Richardson. Even he's just said, sir, nothing happened there. Yeah. More treatment on the Falcons player. Might have just been awkward and just kind of got him in the back of the neck. Which is a very awkward spot to take a hit. Yep, no penalty. No. Nor should there be either. Some more treatment out in the middle of the park. Two points separate these two sides. Well, we were speaking about the two points earlier and we said, mm. should they have taken the tap and, and try to build, build off that with back-to-back -back sets, but it, it, it clearly shows that that's why Joe Callaghan's the coach and not us because those, pro those two points have, have proven uh, dividends. They've, they've really paid dividends. Uh, so far, we're not at the end of the game yet, so you can't sing the praises too high. Kev, you're in the thick of it at the moment. How is the intensity sideline? Mate, you can cut it with a knife down here. Two points to um, two points in it, 12 minutes left in this grand final. Had, it's been a brutal game. There's been a lot of players dropped down. I've just been told that he's popped his shoulder out there. It looks like it's at number five for the Falcons. Yeah, so he's he won't be back in this game. Uh, no word yet on Watts and whether he's going to return from his HIA. We're still waiting to hear back from that. So it's a brutal game of football. They're losing players left and right, and it is really tense down here at sideline. As you want it to be for a grand final, Gian Lajada. They suggested a shoulder. So I think that, yeah, his day is done. They've got interchanges up their sleeve, Sunshine Coast. The Wyndham faithful. Uh, poor kid. Yeah, that left arm certainly looking a little longer than it usually would. Make sure we're pushed up at mark here. It's been a cracking game of footy. Hasn't it? You know, it doesn't matter who you support, you've got to sit back at the end of the day and just go, how good of a game of footy has this been? You know, it was exciting. We spoke about it at half time with Hastings Deering renewing their partnership for the next three years, and I'll tell you what, they'd be very happy with today's game. Absolutely. If this is what we've got to look forward to for the next three years, me, sign me up. Okay. Oh. Tackle two. It's been an outstanding Tackle afternoon two. here at Dolphin Stadium. Jardine. He was up for the fight in the opening stages of the match. No doubt he'll fire up for the closing stages as well. So get a chanky. Centre of the ground. Reynolds. Oh, a dummy. Breaks the line again. Here he goes. Has he got support? He does. Through right. Still going. Another offload. A dummy. Borg. Oh. Borg bags his second. And right, Wyatt Reynolds. Oh, he's already seen one line break today from him. He's not a stranger to it. He's second in the competition for line breaks with 18 this season. And plays like that, as you can see here. Great support from Sunshine Coast as well, Apsi. Borg. Oh, and he crashes over Borg. How many offloads were there in that play? Three or four? Three or four. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Sunshine Coast are ahead, Kevin Brasher. Sunshine Coast hit the front, and I have some more injury news for the winner, Manly Seagulls. Jackson Lott, he has passed his HIA, but he has sustained a neck injury, and he won't be back. So he's out. That's going to cost him an interchange. Hopefully nothing too serious for young Lott. This is brilliant play by the Falcons. And this is what it takes in a game when you're, when you're chasing points. Just got to chance your, chance your arm a little bit. Well... That's two tries now. They've scored with 12 men on the field. Yeah. For Winner Manly. Yeah. They've used it a little bit smarter than what they did last time. The resurgent Falcons. Everyone thought that in the first grade, in the Intrust Super Cup, it would be the Falcons who would fly home. They had such a dominant season, but the 20s, the, the Hastings, Deering, Colts side have been able to build off yeah. the success that their first graders have had. 
And it's away, away. Look, as, uh, as far as the Falcons uh, as a whole, you know, they're, they're Mal Meninga Cup squad. They did feature in the finals. They didn't make it all the way to the end game, but they did feature. Um, they're here in the grand final today, and, you know, the Intra Super Cup team had a, a year that's, you know, never been seen before by the Falcons. So, although they didn't make it all the way in the Intra Super Cup, they certainly broke down some barriers this year that we probably weren't all expecting. So, um, another strong, strong year for the Falcons as a whole, but um, wouldn't this just be the icing on the cake? I don't think many tipped them to win the competition this year. There was the big three up the top. Burley, Wynnum, Townsville. That's it. The Blackhawks, they bowed out in straight sets. Yeah. And of course, it was the Sunny Coast Falcons, the resurgent Falcons who fought their way to victory last Sunday at Pizzy Park. Oh, we've got six to go. So Sunshine Coast with all the momentum. And now finally they're ahead on the scoreboard by only a mere two points. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gents, because we are in for a thrilling finish to the 2019 Hastings Deering Colt season. Jardine straight up the middle. Tackled 12 short of the halfway line. They're about to be restored to 13 men as well, I think, in maybe 30 seconds. So that'll help. Right, Merte. Hit on suspicion. Actually went to the outside. Go for. Smoothie. Reynolds. He's been huge this afternoon. Last tackle move. We were feared. We feared that he was going to be ruled out. He's made a fantastic return. That's been played at, but they're offside. Oh no. An offside player has played at the footy. And the Falcons will get the ball back again. They had the right idea here. We have a look on the replay. A nice kick from Wright. It's played at. And just a brain snap from Robinson. He saw the footy and just wanted to get involved. He wanted to shut it down. He didn't want the Falcons to pick up because it would have been a repeat set, but instead he was offside. So, yeah. oh, just that split second decision. You've got to make it on the run. I think that's okay, experience, Apsy, too. Yeah. Big game, huge crowd all of a sudden. Win them. They've had scoreboard pressure on them for the first time yeah, in this match. That's it, yeah. Well, the Falcons are flying home here. Just in front here, Swifty. One more try could make things here. very Wade, difficult for the Seagulls. Let's go, Wade. Mac go. just about to make his return. Contact here. Be big. Lost legs. Here we are, the Falcons. Shannon, Shannon. On the attack now, only 12 metres away. Smoothie into Jardine. He runs straight into the middle of the park. That's a strong run. Huge run, but a good defensive effort. Simpkin involved. Smoothie out the back. Oh, oh they leave it short. Right through the Borg. He's already scored two tries. He's going to be held up over the line. It was an all or nothing play there by Wynnum. They shot out of the line. One of the defenders left a gaping hole in the defence. What's happened? You got a knock on? No, we got a held up, held up over the line. Oh. Or hasn't he had a huge second half too? Two tries, nearly a third. Really starting to worry. Wynnum's right edge defence. There's some confusion here. I'm not sure, <laughs> not sure what's happening. Push up, three. Okay, we've got to play the ball now. Fires it out. Right. Now for Chanky. Nine metres away. Smoothie. Reynolds. Using his strength. It's taken four defenders to get him to ground. He plays off the back of it. Smoothie over the line. Oh, he gets it down. Tyson Smoothie. Has been huge for the Falcons. He bags a try, deserves it. And the Falcons extend their lead now to 32 points to 26. Kick to come, six to go. Well, Tyson Smoothie, there's that weapon status that we're seeing right now. I picked him to have a good game. And he's been quiet. He's been a little bit quiet. He hasn't had too many runs out of dummy half, but he saved it for the right moment, didn't he? We've got to give a big rap to... White Reynolds, the, his efforts in this second half, you know, to get the quick play level, it took four defenders to get him to ground. He effectively won the ruck, and it just allowed Smoothie to play off the back of it, underneath the post. He's a big body, Smoothie. Yeah. He played in Trust Super Cup this year. He played under-18s this year. He played Oz White, Bank, Melman, and Cup. He's done everything Smoothie this year. And is he about to secure a Hastings-Deering Colts premiership to top off 2019?
Well, it, it, they're about to be eight points ahead, which is um, that's a tough Big. spot to come back from with only five minutes left. They've just got to hold their composure now, the Falcons, with five minutes remaining on the clock. And even though Wynnum have led for a majority of this match, I think it, it can be said that the Falcons have dominated the game. Yeah, they just... Uh, it's taken until now for them to you know, actually see those, those efforts show on the scoreboard. But there's been some gritty work in there by their middlemen. Hasn't there? It's not. It's not always been, you know, that try obviously before this one where there was a few offloads. But it's not always been dazzling, you know, wide plays. It's it's been a lot of gritty stuff in the middle. They're going short. Hit that knock on. So they get the ball back in front. I thought that was the case. The player was in front who jumped up after the knock on. So win them all of a sudden. You can see Simpkin getting into the. The sides, calming them down, so it's calming his side down. And this is where they're going to lean on the experienced players, those big game players. You heard pre-game Joe O'Callaghan say that a few players off to the West Tigers. Simpkin is one of them, and he's had a huge year as well. He wants a penalty. Now for Mack. That'll be six more. Quinlan picks up, throws the dummy, tries to run in broken play, offloads. He's cut down. It's Graham, eight metres short. Now, Simpkin. Oh, I thought possibly he was offside. They were happy with it. Plays it, Graham acting hard. Oh. A short ball. They get in their face, though. None other than Jardine, but that'll be a penalty. It's not quick. They're asking for, they're calling for two points here. They're taking the two. two? two? With three minutes remaining, they are behind by eight. So that's, it could be, this could be ingenious from Wynnum. He's not going to stuff around Gardner because they've only got three minutes remaining. True. So six points to deficit. Falcons leading 34 points to 28. Kev Brasher to you. No doubt you can now cut the tension with a knife on the sideline. Oh, mate, it's an unbelievable atmosphere down here. The BRL A-Grab boys are making that much noise for the Wynnum Manly side here in the crowd. They're just drowning out everybody else. Plenty of Falcon support as well. It is all happening. Six points in it, two and a half minutes to go. This is a grand final. This is a cracking grand final. Isn't One it? for the ages in this age group. Of course, it was initially played as the Colts with the Southeast Queensland sides, but... Further extended to a statewide competition. Again, the restart from Winner Manly. It's plagued them all day. What have they got to offer in this final two and a bit minutes of the 2019 Hastings during Colts season? Parslow drops it to Sorensen McGee on the right edge. Could we be heading to Golden Point? How good would that be? They use the numbers. Gardner. Chimes in. He lost his legs though. Lost the footing. 30 metres away from their own line. Hoffman offloads. Quinlan not sure what to do. Goes to Perry. Offloads. Quinlan well in support. Inside Falcons territory now. Tackle four. Poor pass. Simpkin had the defence rush up on him. This might be it for the winner, Manly Seagulls. Last tackle, Quinlan kicks it downfield. Luke Murtar picks it up. Oh, Wooshka. And it's a, it is a lost ball. Wow. He was smoked, Luke Murtar, and all of a sudden, Winham are back in the game. There is concern for Luke Murtar, though. Yeah, and I think he might have just caught one, caught one high here. I think this is similar to the Reynolds hit. By Gardner earlier in the game. Again, just got awkward. Yeah. So the clock stops with one, just over one minute remaining. Six points. Wow. <laughs> no one's going anywhere. Even if your life depended on it. He just oh, got smoked Jesus. there. And you know what? Monster. Big effort. Clayton Mack comes up with it. Obviously, he was Sinbin for the striking earlier, so he's come up with a big play. Yeah. Where do you reckon they're going to go? Who are they going to go to here? 
Simpkins obviously been electrifying the middle of the puck. Reese Hoffman's had a rather quiet game on the left edge. I was just about to say, he shouldn't be too uh, fatigued. He should be pretty fresh, so. Will he save the best to last? That's what I'm thinking. Righto, scrum the pack. It's buzzing here at Dolphin Stadium. What you want for 2019 grand final day oh. here in the Morton Bay region. Put your arms around him and you need to bind in tight properly. Just over a minute to go. Everyone is on the edge of their sta seats. I know people use that as a throwaway line a couple of times, but literally they are on the edge of their seats. Here we go. Parslo runs the footy. A good tackle though by the Falcons. It'll be desperation defence in this last set of six that Wynnum have to roll the dice unless they get a repeat. Graham tackles. Jardine into the action as you wouldn't be surprised about Quinlan. Oh, no. Oh, it's okay. It's alive. Hoffman goes out to O'Keefe. Back oh. to Quinlan. Still alive. Oh, no. Oh, no. There it is. Richardson's put it down. There it is. Well, the Falcons are celebrating. The calls are now to pack this scrum. They're on their knees with them. They've conceded defeat. The game's not done. There's still 20 seconds remaining. Now the clock will stop. 15 seconds remain. One tackle and then kick it out. Oh, if that, I'll just kick it dead from the scrum. Well, that's it. Trap it in the scrum. The old play, be smart here. <laughs> Trap it in the scrum to about five seconds to go yeah. and then just kick it dead. Yeah. And the Sunshine Coast Falcons are on the edge of victory. Their first grade side, the Intrust Super Cup side, couldn't get the job done, bowing out last week. But it looks like that their Colts will bring home some silverware. Everybody at the club will be riding this one home. Pushing. Okay, the ball's not in. Okay, I gotta say. So the clock stopped in 13 seconds. Let's go. Go. Heads down, heads down, arms around, arms around. Here we arms go. Around. There we go. Final play of the game. Will they try and win it against the feed? Comes out. Quinlan chases it. And they kick it. it dead. And that'll be the ball game. <laughs> the Falcons celebrate. The siren hasn't gone yet. But win them, no. It's too late. They've come from behind. They've been the underdogs throughout this final series. They knocked off the minor premiers. They knocked off the next best, the Burley Bears. And they've knocked off the winner, Manly Seagulls. They've had to play the other three teams in the top four. And they've beat them all. Yeah. And they say you've got to beat the best to be the best. And today, the Sunny Coast Falcons have done just that. What a terrific game. They, uh, they were behind on the scoreboard for most of the game. But you could just, you could just feel it. They just had that slight edge over the, over the Seagulls. And what a thrilling game. What a way to end it. It was close, it was tight, there was tension. There was some big hits. There was a lot of, um, oh, would you say ill-discipline? There was a, a few- uh, Ah, footy, they're kids, <laughs> they're under 20. What do you expect? But, but it Have was brilliant. The elation that's out there in the middle of the park. And, uh, Kev Brasher looks like he's going to catch up with uh, Wyatt Reynolds. He has had a huge game. He, we thought he was out. We thought he would fail his HIA. He passed. He, he's back and he made a huge contribution, particularly in the second 35. He certainly has. All the forwards for the Falcons. Jardine had a massive first half uh, in defence and then came out in the start of the second half and laid on a lovely little offload to set up that try. It's been a monster effort by the Falcons. That's a, it's a very well-deserved win. I'll tell you what, uh, if the, the players would have had the adrenaline running through their veins, I've got the adrenaline running through my <laughs> veins. What a cracking finish to the hastings Deering Colts season. You can see the players. There's Mario. He's ecstatic. <laughs> and they came from behind. They dominated the game, but they just weren't, weren't able to dominate the scoreboard. Winham just seemed to keep scoring against the run of play. But in the second half, the ill-discipline cost win them today. Those two sin bins. And look, they were confident, weren't they? Going in at half-time.
they weren't rattled. They weren't worried about the deficit. They knew if they stuck to stuck to playing good hard footy, they'd come out and get on top in the second half. So we'll hope to catch up with a couple of players post-game. Looks like we're going to head to the presentations first. And then what we'll do is hopefully we might cross and see if we can catch up with a couple of the, the Sunshine Coast Falcons players because they would be uh, fully uh, filled with elation. Absolutely. Nothing quite like it, the feeling of winning a comp. And to do it on such a big stage as well with such a big crowd building. A lot of them too were uh, opposition crowd as well, so to to do it in front of a big opposition crowd is just ma makes it that little bit sweeter. Heads, hats up, hats off to uh, to Coach Sam Marwini. I think the the HIAs they got, um, and they didn't rot the system at all. It just happened to be they did have legitimate head injuries that, that helped the interchange out, and they could bring the fresh legs on in that second it, 35. Yeah. And you can see the Falcons now, at the moment getting into a huddle. Luke Murta, he was huge. We thought it could have proved costly. The knock on at the end there could have been costly. You can see their faces. Listen to them sing the team song. I think they're singing the team song. I think they're actually having a chat. Plenty of celebration, though. Here they go. Sunny Case Falcons filled with elation, but filled with belief too. Absolutely. We heard from Coach Sam Marwini at the start of the, the game, pre-game. Uh, he, he, he said that, uh, you know, that they, even though they were seen as the underdogs. Uh, we're going to go to Keb Brasher though. I, I'm sorry, we, we've obviously a bit short of time. We'll go back to that. But Keb Brasher, I think, is with Wyatt Reynolds. Kev. With Wyatt Reynolds, mate, and congratulations, 2019 Hastings Deering Colt Premiers. How does it feel? Oh, mate, it's unbelievable. Words can't explain. We're all local boys. We've all fought so hard. Sammy, local coach, mate, it means so much to the coast. We fought for it all year, and it means more to us than anyone else. And you had to come from behind today to do it. You had to beat the three top teams in the competition consecutively to win this competition. You said it means more to us. I think you showed that by the way you've played in the last month. Mate. We finished fourth in the ladder, we beat Townsville and we beat Burley and now we've come out here and shows we've got more determination than anyone else and we just, at the end of the day, we just wanted it more than anyone else. It means so much to us. Well, mate, congratulations. There's no hiding how much it means to everybody here. Congratulations, 2019 Premiers. Thanks, mate. Can I just shout out that one's Farkas and Sammy. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Congrats. Well done to Wyatt Reynolds. He was huge in the second half, Apsy. And, yeah. and we mentioned they're filled with belief. They, everyone kind of saw them as the underdogs. And I think Wynnum, they, everyone expected them to win, myself included. And just wasn't to be. So we are going to have the post-game presentation, hopefully catch up with a couple other players before we finish here. But let's go to the middle of the field, ready for the Hastings Deering Colts presentations. Queensland Rugby League Chief Operating Officer Rowan Sawyer and representing major sponsor Hastings Hearing, Kelly Jury. Put your hands together, please. 
And of course, these matches aren't possible without our match officials. So I'd like to welcome to the stage to accept their medals, referee Sam Swift and his touch judges today, Marcus Fitzgerald and James Harbage. Today, the man of the match will receive $1,000 cash courtesy of sponsor Hastings Steering. And this was a really tough one to choose. But from the Sunshine Coast Falcons, I'd like to welcome to the stage number nine, Tyson Smoothie. Congratulations, Tyson. Unfortunately, there's always a loser in these games, but they can hold their head high, the winner men, the Seagulls. And I'd like to invite them to the stage to say a few words to the captain of the Seagulls, Brock Richards. Commiserations, Brock, but a really well played game by the Seagulls. Now I'd like to invite to say a few words the victorious captain. Welcome to the stage, Jack Wright. Full credit to the boys. Um, to the cliches, but, um, no, I'd like to thank Hastings Deering for um, hosting the top. Uh, Record for hosting the Grand Final. Um, amazing venue here. Um, unreal to play on this atmosphere. So, um, I'd like to thank Wyndham. You boys are an unreal team. Um, I'm lucky today, boys, but keep your heads up. It's a good side. Um, I'd like to thank Bandy Jones for um, our major sponsor. Um, and uh, yeah, the boys. Uh, it's going to be proud of everyone down with us. Um, Packer boys from the sunny coast who turned up and ripped through this year, so good shit. Well, well said, Jack. And now I'd like to welcome the team onto the stage to accept their medals. Please put your hands together for the Hastings Deering Colts Premier, the Sunshine Coast Falcons. Here and sit on the stage. And stay at the front. So they're going to come in and call me to sit down in front of us. You know, to move here and move it back. That's it. Sit on the front. Sit on the front. Sit on the front.
there you go. The 2019 Hastings Deering Colts Premiers, the Sunshine Coast Falcons. A big victory for, for them over the winner, Manly Seagulls. Now, we're hoping to catch up with the Hastings Deering man of the match, Tyson Smoothie. He played a, a big, big role. You predicted him to be the weapon, and you were 100% on the money, Yapsy. Yeah, look, he um, he he saved the best till last, that try crashing over in the, the last 10 minutes of the game, giving them that lead that they ended up keeping all the way until the end of the game. Um, but you know, there's a lot of work that he does in and around the middle that you don't tend to notice. Makes a lot of tackles, um, shores up that middle of the of the field for his defensive line and uh, also sparks the attack so gets his, his forwards and his playmakers off the off the front foot when they're making their plays so it's um it's a well-deserved well-deserved award for the young fella he's done well had a big season he has of course making his intra super cup debut this year as well as we cross now to kev bracia with the man of the match thanks to hastings during tyson smoothie I've got the Hastings Deering man of the match for the grand final, Tyson Smoothie. How are you feeling after that? 2019 Premier and $1,000 richer, mate. Oh, that's unreal. I don't really care about that man of the match. That was the best feeling winning that. Um, yeah, I love those boys. And that was, a, that was a tough season. We finished really strong and, yeah, we deserve it. You can tell it's a really tight-knit group as you yeah. fought a lot of that game, you fought a lot of this final series, you've had to come from behind on a number of occasions. Was there ever a point where you doubted it or was there always full self-belief in this group? Nah, full self-belief. We knew it was going to come down to the wire and we kept saying just keep turning up until the end, those little effort areas and we'll come way off the win. Mate, really good performance today. Congratulations, you guys did a fantastic job. 2019, man of the match in the grand final, Tyson Smoothie. Thanks, man, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks very much, Kev Good Brasher man. with Tyson Smoothie. He, he, he played fantastic early today. He was, he was outstanding um, and, and thoroughly deserves the Hastings Deering man of the match. Well, that wraps up the 2019 Hastings Deering Colts season and what a way to end it with the... Sunshine Coast Falcons just too good at the end of the day. 34 points to 28. Ian Apps, thank you very much for your contributions throughout the two matches we've Absolute covered pleasure. today on the Q Connect Network. Kev Brasher, the same to you. Uh, thank you very much for your company this afternoon. And we are gearing up now for the Intra Super Cup Clash, the grand final between the Winner Manly Seagulls and the Burley Bears. That action live and exclusive on Channel 9, so you can switch us off now and switch your TVs on the Channel 9. Thank you very much for your company and hospitality uh, this afternoon here at Dolphin Stadium. We have thoroughly, uh, uh, really enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed the, the two games we've been able to bring you across the Q Connect network. And until next season, thank you very much and enjoy the off-season, but uh, more importantly, enjoy the Intra Super Cup Clash, which is coming up next.